أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سبحانك اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لسان يفقه قولي أمسينا وأمس الملك لله والحمد لله لا شريك له لا إله إلا هو وإليه المصير أمسينا على فطرة الإسلام وكلمة الإخلاص وعلى دين نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى ملة أبينا إبراهيم حنيفة وما كان من المشركين اللهم إني أمسيت منك في نعمة وعافية وستر فأتم علي نعمتك وعافيتك وسترك في الدنيا والآخرة اللهم ما أمسى بي من نعمة أو بأحد من خلقك فمنك وحدك لا شريك لك فلك الحمد ولك الشكر يا رب لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك رضينا بالله ربا وبالإسلام دينا وبمحمد صلى الله عليه وسلم نبيا ورسولا ثم أما بعد my dear respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to the uh, Friday night lecture uh, and uh, lecture of tafsir <coughs> and tonight inshallah we're going to uh, remain in surah al-baqarah last time we did uh, verses from surah al-baqarah and we will remain in surah al-baqarah and tonight we will do the verses from uh, 67 to 74 67 to 74 and <coughs> And the, 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 the topic of these verses is the, the, the famous story of the Baqarah uh, to Bani Israel, the cow of Banu Israel. And the scholars said that this surah is named Surah al-Baqarah after this story, the, the, the story of Baqarah to Bani Israel. So I will uh, uh, recite the, the verses. Uh, and then I will read the translation, insha'Allah. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Wa idh qala Musa li qawmihi Inna allaha ya'murukum an tadbahu baqarah Qalu atattakhiduna huzwa قال أعوذ بالله أن أكون من الجاهلين قالوا ادع لنا ربك يبين لنا ما هي قال إنه يقول إنها بقرة لا فارض ولا بكر عوان بين ذلك فافعلوا ما تؤمرون قالوا ادع لنا ربك يبين لنا ما لونها قال إنه يقول إنها بقرة صفراء فاقع لونها فاقع لونها تسر الناظرين قالوا ادع لنا ربك يبين لنا ما هي إن البقرة شابه علينا إن البقرة شابه علينا وإنا إن شاء الله لمهتدون قال إنه يقول إنها بقرة لا ذلول تثير الأرض ولا تسقي الحرف ولا تسقي الحرف مسلمة لا شية فيها قالوا الآن جئت بالحق فذبحوها وما كادوا يفعلون وَإِذْ قَتَلْتُمْ نَفْسًا فَادَّارَأْتُمْ فِيهَا وَاللَّهُ مُخْرِجٌ مَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْتُمُونَ فَقُلْنَا اضْرِبُوهُ بِبَعْضِهَا كَذَلِكَ يُحْيِي اللَّهُ الْمَوْتَى وَيُرِيكُمْ آيَاتِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ ثم قست قلوبكم من بعد ذلك فهي كالحجارة أو أشد قسوة 
وَإِنَّ مِنَ الْحِجَارَةِ لَمَا يَتَفَجَّرُ مِنْهُ الْأَنْهَارُ وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَشَّقَّقُ فَيَخْرُجُ مِنْهُ الْمَاءُ وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَهْبِطُ مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ وَمَا اللَّهُ بِغَافِلٍ عَمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ so these are the uh, the verses. Uh, I will uh, read the translation now, uh, verse seventy uh, or sixty-seven. وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ And remember when Moses, Musa alayhi salam, said to his people, "Allah commands you to sacrifice a cow." They replied, "Are you mocking us? Are you making fun of us?" Moses responded, "I seek refuge in Allah from acting foolishly." They said, call upon your Lord to clarify for us what type of cow it should be. He replied, Allah says, the cow should neither be old nor young, but in between. So do as you are commanded. They said, call upon your Lord to specify for us its color. He replied, Allah says, it should be a bright yellow cow pleasant to see again they said call upon your lord so that he may make clear to us which cow for all cows look the same to us then allah willing we will be guided to the right one he replied allah says it should have been used neither to till the soil nor water the fields wholesome and without blemish they said, now you have come with the truth, yet they still slaughtered it hesitantly. This is when a man was killed and you disputed who the killer was, but Allah revealed what you concealed. So we instructed, strike the dead body with a piece of the cow. This is how easily Allah brings the dead, uh, the dead to life, showing you his signs so that you may understand. Even then, your hearts become or became hardened like a rock, or even harder than a rock. <coughs> For some rocks gush rivers, others split spilling water, while others are humbled in awe of Allah. And Allah is never unaware of what you do. Subhanallah, this, uh, this story is, is amazing. And if you remember last week, I told you that one of the, one of the problems in the Aqeedah of Banu Israel, Ahlul Kitab, <coughs> is when it comes to believing in the afterlife. When it comes to believing in, in the resurrection, in life after death, they have a big problem. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in many verses in the Quran wanted to show them his power. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he created you the first time from nowhere, from nothing, he is able to create you again and it, it is easier for you, for him to create you again. كَمَا بَدَأْنَا أَوَّلَ خَلْقٍ نُعِيدُهُ As we have created you the first time, we will be able to create you again, and it's not going to be difficult for us. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. So, this story of Al-Baqarah, and this story happened within Banu Israel. And there are so many stories in the Quran about Banu Israel. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted us, the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu to learn from their mistakes. And not to make the same mistakes that they have done with Allah, and with their prophets. So we will not do the same mistakes that they have, they have done. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us in the Quran a lot of stories about Banu Israel. So the story is about a murder that took place. Somebody was killed within Banu Israel. And there was no witness when this murder took place. 
When the people found out the following day, they didn't know who killed it, who killed him, so they started accusing each other, groups of people. You are the one who, you are the one, no you. So they had this dispute. So they went to their prophet Musa alayhi salam, and they asked him, you are a prophet, you have a direct connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so we want you to answer this question. Ask Allah to tell us who is the one who committed this murder. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in order to test them, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does with, with all the nations and all the people, to put them into trials, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked them to do a specific thing. If you want to know, if you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to tell you who committed this crime, this murder, then you have to do something. Of course, this story was mentioned in the books of Banu Israel, as we have talked several times, Al-Israeliyat. Al-Israeliyat means the stories that were mentioned in the books of Banu Israel. This story was mentioned in details. Al-Quran did not give us a lot of details. But in the books of Banu Israel, there are few details. Like for example, saying that um, the, the, the man who was killed, uh, you know, was killed by, by uh, his, his cousin because he was, a well, he was a wealthy person, this man who was killed. He, he was a wealthy person, he had a beautiful uh, daughter and this man wanted to marry his daughter and to inherit that, you know, all this stuff. Is it true or not? Allahu alam. Al-Quran didn't tell us anything about it. Also the Israeliyat talked about uh, uh, you know, this, this amazing cow, Baqarah. You know, when, 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 they, when they started asking about more specific description, more specific description, at the end, they could not find that type of cow with all the descriptions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them. The Israeliyat said that only one person, he was an orphan who uh, had that specific cow. And when he saw them insisting on that cow, so he asked for the, for the cost, for the price of that cow, the, the weight of the cow in gold. The weight of the, the cow in gold. The Israeliyat said that they paid him that gold and he became a wealthy person because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him that rizq, that, that, that wealth, because he was dutiful to his parents. Whether it's true or not, Allahu alam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't tell us about these details. Why I'm mentioning them? So next time when you are you know, with people or you hear this story and you hear these details, feel free to tell them that these details are not mentioned in the Quran. They are only mentioned in the books of Banu Israel and we don't know whether it's true or not. Allahu alam. Now, Let's come to um, the, uh, the verses. The verses started by, وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ إِذْ قَالَ Here, this is, this is a way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And remember when Moses said to his people, now Prophet Musa is telling what we're going to say uh, uh, to his people as a response to them because they asked him to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, tell them who is the one who committed the murder. So Musa alayhi salam talked to Allah azza wa jal and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him tell your people the following. Inna Allah ya'murukum an tadbahu baqarah Allah commands you to sacrifice a cow. This command didn't come from Musa. It came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Musa was very clear. Inna Allah. It's not me. It is Allah. Is the one who is telling you, if you want to know who committed this murder, then sacrifice a cow. What was their answer? قالوا, they replied, are you mocking us? Are you making fun of us? 
We are asking you to show us who committed the murder and you are telling us that our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is asking us to sacrifice a cow. What is this, Musa? And this is a sign of disrespect. Disrespect. Musa السلام, is the one who saved you by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the tyranny and slavery of Fir'aun. He is the one who liberated you from Egypt and took you to another land where you are free now. Through Musa السلام, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down to you al-manna wa salwa and gave you the provision and gave you everything you asked for. This is Musa السلام. Now, Musa السلام, is telling you that Allah is asking you to sacrifice a cow and you are telling him that you are mocking, you are making fun of us. Are you joking? This is a sign of a big disrespect to Musa alayhi salam. But Musa alayhi salam, instead of answering them by telling them, how come you tell me this? How dare you are to tell me this? I'm not, no. He responded to them, he replied to them the way a teacher responds or replies to a student, okay? He told them, I seek refuge in Allah from acting foolishly. Who is Al-Jahil here? Al-Jahil is the one who doesn't tell people what Allah is telling them or asking them to do. So I seek refuge in Allah. I'm not a Jahil, I'm not a foolish. You know, I'm just telling you that Allah, this is what he commanded you to do. But they responded to that <coughs> in that way, and Musa السلام, replied to them, أعوذ بالله أن أكون من الجاهلين. So he didn't want to, you know, to start an argument with them and all that stuff. He just responded to them in a very eloquent way. And he cleared himself from being, uh, uh, you know, a foolish person. Then, instead of just grabbing any cow, at the beginning, did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell them any, any descriptions? No. Just idhbahu baqarah. Sacrifice a cow. Any cow you find. The first one you see. The cheapest one. The most, you know, it doesn't matter. Any cow. But because of their nature, that they always argue. They always, you know, they are rebellious. They don't want to, to, to take or to do whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or their prophet asked them to do at the first time. They started asking questions. Qalu, they said, Ud'u lana rabbaka yubayyin lana ma hi. Call upon your Lord to clarify for us what type of cow. Another disrespect. When they say, Ud'u lana rabbaka, your Lord. Isn't he your Lord too? He is the Lord of everyone. Why you are, why you are telling Musa alayhi salam, your Lord. It's as if he is not your Lord, Banu Israel. He is the Lord of Musa only. And this is another sign of disrespect. Now disrespecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and disrespecting Musa alayhi salam. Ud'u lana rabbak yubayyin lana mahi to clarify for us what type of cow it should be uh, the one that we should sacrifice. But Musa alayhi salam went back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, in the story in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't tell us that Musa came back to us and we told him that, no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right away uh, told us what was the answer of Musa alayhi salam. قَالَ إِنَّهُ يَقُولُ إِنَّهَا بَقَرَةٌ لَا فَارِضٌ وَلَا بِكْرٌ عَوَانٌ بَيْنَ ذَلِكٌ Allah says the cow should neither be old nor young, but in between, عَوَانٌ بَيْنَ ذلك, Between being old and being young. فَفْعَلُوا مَا تُؤْمَرُونَ So do what as you are commanded. So Musa alayhi salam here is reminding them. No more questions about it. Just do whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked you to do. Don't complicate things. And this is a lesson to us, for all of us that we should take Islam simple, in a simple way, 
Don't try to ask questions, you know, about one issue and to go deep and ask about the details. Don't do that. Islam, alhamdulillah, is very simple. Just look at what Allah, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks you to do and just do it. What the Prophet asked us to do and we do it. That's it. Without asking a hundred questions about one issue. This is not who we are as the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are different. So he told them, just do it. Do what you have been commanded to do. No, they didn't do it. They came back to him with another question. One more time, your Lord. To tell us what, what, what's the color, you know? It does matter, you know, to, 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 to have the cow in a specific color? قَالَ إِنَّهُ يَقُولُ He replied to them, إِنَّهَا بَقَرَةٌ صَفْرَاءُ فَاقِعُ اللَّوْنُهَا تَسُرُّ النَّاظِرِينَ It should be a bright yellow cow, pleasant to see. I've never seen a bright, you know, honestly, wallahi, I've never seen a bright yellow cow in my life. But this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them. Okay, you, you, you want more details? Okay, now it should be a bright yellow cow. Not only this, tasurrun nadirin, pleasant. When you, when you see the cow, you, you, you feel pleased, which means an active one, a beautiful one, a beautiful color, and all that stuff. Subhanallah. Did they do it? Not yet. Qalu, one more time. Ud'u lana rabbaka yubayyil lana mahi. Inna al baqara tashabaha alayna wa inna insha'allahu la muhtadun. Again, they said, Call upon your Lord, again, your Lord, not our Lord, that he may make clear to us which cow, for all cows look the same to us. SubhanAllah. Then Allah willing, insha'Allah, we will be guided to the right one. So now, if you tell us, then we know which one we are supposed to sacrifice. He got back to them after talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he told them, قَالَ إِنَّهُ يَقُولُ إِنَّهَا بَقَرَةٌ لَا ذَلُولٌ تُثِيرُ الْأَرْضَ وَلَا تَسْقِ الْحَرْضِ مُسَلَّمَةٌ لَا شِيَةَ فِيهَا It should have been used neither to till the soil nor water the fields. Which means unemployed baqara. A cow that doesn't do anything. That doesn't work. لا شيئة فيها Clear from any defect. It shouldn't have any defect. You know? قالوا الآن جئت بالحق They said, now you have come with the truth. Another sign of disrespect. It's as if what he told them before was not the truth. It's as if what he told them before, he was just wasting their time and he was just joking and now, only now he said the truth. Look at this disrespect to the Prophet. Alayhi salatu wassalam, Musa alayhi salatu wassalam. فَذَبَحُوهَا وَمَا كَادُوا يَفْعَلُونَ They yet, or yet, they still slaughtered it hesitantly. Yani they slaughtered it and they wish if they didn't do it. With difficulty. Listen to this and then listen to the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described al-Muslimin, the believers, al-Mu'mineen, in at the end of Surah Al-Baqarah. وَقَالُوا سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا غُفْرَانَكَ رَبَّنَا وَإِلَيْكَ الْمَصِيرِ This is who we are. When we hear the command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we say, سَمِعْنَا we hear, وَأَطَعْنَا we obey. Right away. Not سَمِعْنَا وَعَصَيْنَا we hear and we disobey. No, this is not who we are. Samirna wa ata'na, right away. Without arguing, without trying to find excuses, without complicating things. Samirna wa ata'na. About them, fadabahuha wa ma kadu yafalun. Yet they still slaughtered it with big hesitance. You know, they were hesitant to, to do it. They wished they, they didn't do it with difficulty. They, they, they did it, finally, with difficulty. So these are all <coughs> uh, signs for the, the, the way they responded 
to the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, Allah Azza wa Jal is showing, some, is showing us something that we have to be careful from. And if we try, you know, to do with the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, anything the way they have done it, then unfortunately, we have part of that nation. This is not how we are supposed to deal with our, with our faith and with the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah Azza wa said, وَإِذْ قَتَلْتُمْ نَفْسًا فَادَّارَأْتُمْ فِيهَا وَاللَّهُ مُخْرِجٌ مَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْتُمُونَ This is when a man was killed and you disputed who the killer was. Again, a man was killed and people disputed and argued about who is the one who committed this murder. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked them to uh, slaughter this cow and then to get part of this cow, any part, a leg or any part, and strike the dead person. فَقُلْنَا ضْرِبُوهُ بِبَعْضِهَا كَذَلِكَ يُحْيِي اللَّهُ الْمَوْتَ وَيُرِيكُمْ آيَاتِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ So we instructed, we told them, strike the dead body with a piece of the cow. Just grab any piece from this cow, the dead cow, and strike the body of the person. This is how easily Allah brings the dead to life, showing you his signs so that you may and understand. So the story says that they took a piece of the cow, striking the person who is dead. He was murdered. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him life back. He woke up alive again. And he mentioned the name of the person who killed him. And then he died again. This is exactly what happened. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was able to do it without al-Baqarah, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was able to tell them, okay, go near the body, the dead body. And everybody can go over there, surround the body. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with what? Kun fayakun, be and it will be. Will bring life back to the dead body and the person can tell them the name of the killer and die again. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to test his people, wanted to test the followers of the prophets to see how they will respond to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how they will behave with their prophet, whether with respect or disrespect, whether they will obey the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or they will start arguing and going around the issue and asking more questions and all that stuff. And we have seen what happened. We have seen what happened. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything he wants, even granting victory to the, to the Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can, you know, is able to grant victory all the time. But sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses to challenge the believers. At the time of the Prophet Sallallahu the Muslims, they, they were granted victory in the Battle of Badr, right? And they were extremely happy, very happy. This is the Nasr, the victory that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala promised us and all that stuff. One year later, they were defeated in the Battle of, of Uhud. Some people say, why? I mean, they are believers, right? They are always supported by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How come Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the mushrikeen defeat al-Muslimin and al-Mu'min? Well, how come? Where is Allah? And 70 of the Sahaba were, 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 were martyred. On the top of them, Hamza and Mus'ab radiallahu anhum wa anil sahabati ajma'een. To the point that the Prophet sallallahu was you know, uh, express this time or this period of sorrow and sadness because of the death of this Sahaba and his uncle uh, uh, Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us that sometimes we are granted victory, but sometimes because of what we do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala challenges us. 
challenges us. But as long as we go back and we reconcile with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless us with another victory. And this is exactly what happened at the time of the Prophet sallallahu And throughout the history of this ummah until now, until this moment, until this moment. As one of the scholars said, an nasr the victory, is right above our heads. Waiting for Allah's command. Kun fayakun. So we should not ask when is Mata Nasrullah. We should ask what are we doing to bring down that victory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are we do? Do we deserve it? As a community, as an ummah, do we deserve that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised to grant victory to the Muslimin, to the Mu'mineen. But according to his time and according to his will, not according to ours. Not according to ours. Whenever we deserve it, Allah will give it to us. This is the rule. In tansurullaha yansurkum. This is the, 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 the condition. If you show support to Allah, which means you reconcile with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you do what he asked you to do, then at that moment we deserve the victory from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, the man was given life briefly. He woke up and he mentioned the name of the killer and he passed away. But look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commented on the behavior of the people of Musa alayhi salam. He said, ثُمَّ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذلك. Before this. Imagine if you, if you were there, any one of us, and you are in front of a dead body for several days. A dead body for several days, okay? And then your prophet told you to do such and such and such. So they brought this piece from the dead cow. They strike the body and you are, you are seeing with your own eyes the dead person became alive, mentioned the name of the killer and he passed away and he died again. When you see this miracle, and this ummah, we, we, did, we have never seen miracles. Because the miracle stopped with the prophets. After the prophets, there are no miracles. There are karamat, but not mu'jizat, not miracles. Imagine if you were there and you saw this miracle. What kind of impact it will have on your iman? And you know, you are, you are you know, sitting or standing close to Prophet Musa alayhi salam. And you see, the, <coughs> you, excuse me, you see this miracle right in front of your eye. What kind of impact this will have on your Iman? And I can tell you about myself. I don't know about you, but I can tell you about myself. If I experience or I observe something like this, I'll, I'll be the, the, I will be the strongest mu'min on this earth. I will never question anything about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his ability and his power. You see a miracle. And by the way, Banu Israel before this saw a lot of miracles. They saw the, the entire sea split. And they went through, right? They saw their Prophet Musa alayhi salam striking the, the, the stones, the rocks, and then the water gushing from the rocks. They saw the whole mountain collapse in front of them by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these kind of things are supposed to soften our hearts. To make our hearts full of iman and yaqeen and love and khashya and fear from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? But here is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. He said, ثُمَّ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ فَهِيَّ كَالْحِجَارَةِ أَوْ أَشَدَّ قَسْوَةِ Even then, your hearts after that, your hearts became hardened like a rock or even harder than a rock. What's harder than a rock? Can you imagine a heart hardened, harder than a rock? And then he said, وَإِنَّ مِنَ الْحِجَارَةِ لَمَا يَتَفَجَّرُ مِنْهُ الْأَنْهَارِ وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَشَّقَّقُ فَيَخْرُجُ مِنْهُ الْمَاءِ For some rocks gush rivers, others split 
spilling water. And why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said this? Because in verse 260 from Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِذِ اسْتَسْقَى مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ فَقُلْ نَضْرِبْ بِعَصَاكَ الْحَجَرِ And remember when Moses prayed for water for his people, we said, strike the rock with your staff, with your asa, stick. Then 12 springs gushed out, uh, gushed out and each tribe knew its drinking place. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is telling us about Musa striking the rocks and having the water gushing from the rocks. How about the... Uh, uh, the, the, the other one. While others are humbled, uh, other rocks are humbled in awe of Allah. And this is when Musa السلام, and his people asking, Arina Allah Jahratan. Show us Allah. We want to see Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them, I'm not going to appear to you. But if you want to see me, look at the mountain. And they are all Banu Israel in front of a mountain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed his power, his azamah, his might to the mountain. What happened to the mountain? Collapsed. The entire mountain collapsed. Min khashiyatillah. Out of fear from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is when Musa alayhi salam collapsed. The Prophet collapsed. And he became unconscious. And here is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us, while others, mountains, are humbled in awe of Allah. And Allah is never unaware of what you do. Allah knows not only what you do, but He knows what, what you conceal in your heart and what you reveal in your actions. This is a lesson that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us to understand the behavior of Banu Israel and the mistakes that they have done at that time with their prophets What we can learn from this, my dear brothers and sisters, number one, aqidatul ba'thi wa nushur the aqidah of resurrection, our belief that after death there will be a life. Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing them that a dead person can be given life back and then go to death, subhanAllah. There is no powerful example than the one that they experienced physically right in front of their eyes. The other thing that we understand from here, my dear brothers and sisters, is the obligation of executing the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without arguing, without trying to find excuses. And by the way, when it comes to executing the, the orders and the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to keep in mind that we are dealing with Allah. You are not dealing with people. Meaning that don't try to find an excuse. Allah, Allah knows me and He knows what I have in my heart. He knows my intention. If I can do something and I do it, Allah knows about it. If I can do it and I don't do it, Allah knows that this is my weakness. I don't have to tell Him, Ya Allah, you know, you know I wanted to... You don't. He knows. I mean, you might, you might, you know, find excuses or justifications from people. Why? Because people don't have access to my heart, to my niya, right? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you don't have to. So be straightforward with Allah. Be honest with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you cannot play games with Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, um, the importance of purifying our hearts. So our hearts won't be hard as the one described in this ayah. Because if we don't work on our hearts, if we don't purify tazkiyah of our hearts, our hearts become hard. And you know the sign of the hardness of the heart is when the heart does not distinguish between what's right and what's wrong. You see the wrong thing and you don't care. For you, it's all the same. The wrong and the, the, the right. The good and the evil, al-ma'roof and al-munkar, they are all the same. If you see them the same, it means your heart has a problem. One sign of the hardness of the heart is when you listen to the Qur'an. 
you don't feel anything. You don't feel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to you. It's as if somebody is reading a poem or something like this. This is another sign of the hardness of the heart. Another sign of the hardness of the heart is when you listen to al mawa'idah to an advice, to khatira, to a reminder, and you don't feel anything in your heart. You don't feel impacted. You read a story about, you know, something. One of the Sahaba, one of the Anbiya, one of the Salihin, and, and you don't feel anything about it. As if nothing is happening. Another sign of the, the hardness of the heart, you see your brothers and sisters going through hardship, and your heart doesn't move. You don't feel anything towards them. Any sympathy, any mercy, any compassion about, you know, around them or towards them. This is another sign of the hardness of the heart. In order to avoid this, my dear brothers and sisters, we need to take care of our hearts. We need to purify our hearts. So when we listen, we listen to the Quran, when we listen to the mawa'idah, to the reminder, when we read the story, what, it will impact us. It will increase our iman. This is what we should do, my dear brothers and sisters. The other thing is um, when we try to ask question and go deep in the question. You know, when the Prophet, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked the, you know, uh, made it clear to the Sahaba that, that Al-Hajj is mandatory on Muslims, um, one of the Sahaba asked, أَكُلَّ عَامٍ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Is it mandatory on us every single year on Messenger of Allah? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't, didn't answer that question. Why? Because that Sahabi was not supposed to, uh, to answer that, to ask this question. Allah, the Prophet told you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Al-Hajj mandatory for Muslims, just take it as it is. If you can do it once a life, do it once a life. If you can do it every year, do it every year. If you can do it every one, every, uh, once every five years, do it as much as you can. But going through these details and asking, this is not what we are supposed to do as Muslims. We just take the command as it is and we do it as simple as possible. This is something very important. And the other thing, the last thing that we learn from here is the obligation of showing respect to the prophets. Yes, the prophets are not here, but we do have Warathatul Anbiya, the heirs of the prophets, those who inherited the legacy of the prophets, who are the scholars. As we show respect to the prophets, if they are here, we show respect to our scholars. We don't argue with them. We don't treat them with disrespect. We always sh we should show respect to the, pro to, the, to, the, to the scholars because they give us the knowledge of the prophets. Because they give us the knowledge of the prophets. So this is something very important that we learn from this story. Uh, and I hope that, uh, and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have learned something Today, from, from the story of Al-Baqarah, the cow of Banu Israel, again, the, the purpose of this story and others in the Quran is to avoid making the same mistakes and to be as Ummah Muhammad Sallallahu to be a distinguished Ummah, distinguished in our Aqeedah, distinguished in our Ibadah, in our obedience to Allah and His Prophet, in our Akhlaq, in the way we treat our scholars, in the way we respect our Prophets, everything that we do according to the teachings of Allah Azza wa Jal and the teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم We ask Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala to increase our knowledge and to strengthen our iman and to give us the, the, the best understanding of the Quran and the best understanding of the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وجزاكم الله خيرا